Hey everyone, my name is Fernando Ramacho. I'm really sorry I couldn't be there with you today, but I made this little thing uh, to make up for it. Um, I make stuff, I used to make games, and now I'm working on a project called Panoramical, which is this abstract musical landscape game-like thing. Uh, it's coming out early next year, and uh, I'm working with David Canega and a bunch of other people. Um, so I'm really interested in like interactive things that are pretty, that feel nice, um, that make you go like, you know, whoa. Um, and sometimes they're games, sometimes they're weird abstract toys, sometimes they're installations, performances, whatever. So I guess I'm in this kind of in-between space between like a developer and a VJ or something. Um, anyway, Michael invited me to talk and um, I started thinking a lot about procedural generation the way I use it and I, I don't think I use it in a like a normal way, I guess. Um, like, for example, I love dungeon crawlers, but I don't think I could make one. Um, and, you know, I appreciate a good system, but I also like pretty things. So I feel like a lot of people use procedural generation to kind of automate what designers can do, like make the game create infinite levels so they don't have to, right? Um, but what's interesting to me about this is to use it mostly as a tool for discovery um, to kind of create these simple rules and systems and observe the outcomes and get you know results that I wouldn't have thought of right I couldn't predict and shape those outcomes and control them to create something beautiful that wasn't there before right like kind of controlling the chaos um, and what I found is that it's actually pretty easy to make something interesting like a race have this amazing capacity to kind of fill in the blanks and get an emotional response from even the most simple shapes and like behaviors. Um, so I thought I'd share like a few things that I find cool about involving procedural generation into making something and hopefully that'll spark some ideas. So what if you let the player control the variables for your thing, right? Like, tweaking systems is actually a lot of fun by itself. Um, the project I'm working on right now is kind of based around that. Like, you know, I'm just changing scale of objects and emission rate of particles and color for the background, what, whatever. Um, but I'm also like letting the players change that, like, instead of me just creating this one thing. Uh, like, and it makes you as a player feel like you have so much control, even with just a few properties. Like. Uh, you know, if I find I spend 15 minutes tweaking this one variable, I know I gotta let the player do that. Uh, so maybe don't like just create a world that the players move through, but let the player change the world directly. Like with, even with the UI or maybe the games, mechanic is about that, just like tweaking variables in a simulation, or that's a mechanic, or it doesn't even have to have an objective, right? Just playing around with a system, that's always fun. Another thing that works really well are autonomous agents. Like, if you have like simple agents that uh, have simple rules, like for example, this is a thing I made. Like, it's just, just like particles rotating to like sine waves, and they already feel kind of organic, alive, right? Even if they're just rotating a little bit, or maybe even better if you make them do stuff with each other. Like, if you know, if they're close enough, you draw a line between them, right? Or play a little note. Um, that's always goes a long way. So what if you make everything draw? One thing I, I found really interesting is when you don't clear the buffer and you just let things leave a trail. Um, I made this little toy a few years ago and it's all just bitmaps being drawn into the background, right? It's just like not clearing anything in the screen and just letting everything draw. And you know, I think it creates very interesting results, especially when you're playing around with color, um, and it doesn't have to be too complicated. So what if you don't make a thing yourself, but use some someone else's thing and reuse it in a way that's interesting? I was playing around with this at uh, Sand Game. Uh, you know, what's out there like these kind of physics simulation toys where you place pixels and they behave as elements. Uh, so I was playing around with one and I kind of just look beautiful, right? Just a simulation, creating all these dynamics. So I basically just kind of got some video, cropped some parts of it, and then asked on Twitter if someone wanted to make music, right? And then I ended up making this kind of little video as a result. You should, like, make it always as easy as possible to discover things. Um, 
could figure out a workflow that lets you tweak things in real time and see the outcome as you change the variables. Uh, but always keep it simple, right? Like Unity is great for this, um, but otherwise you can roll out a simple way, even just like a keyboard shortcut that will add or subtract to a variable. Um, you know, just playing around with that, that's always fun. So yeah, you know, don't overthink it. Um, just put stuff on top of stuff, see what happens. Change code without knowing what it does.